All right. So this is where we were last time, and we um, got into technical issues, difficulties, whatever. Okay. Directed distance is something that we've dealt with for a while, but we haven't called it anything. So when we say that an angle is positive, we mean that it goes in a counterclockwise direction and a negative angle measurement goes in the clockwise direction, but that doesn't mean that the angle itself is negative, just that it's going in a negative direction. And the same thing with um, vertical and horizontal measurements. A negative four measurement doesn't mean that the length or the width is negative. It just means that it's moving in a negative direction. So with polar coordinates, we again are going to be thinking about directed um, distance. So we're going to have first the parts of this system. A pole is what we call the origin. The polar axis lies along the positive x-axis, but you notice there's no negative x-axis and there's no y-axis. The angle theta goes counterclockwise if it's positive, clockwise if it's negative, and we always start at the polar axis. And then r is the distance from the pole to the point. So a point in polar coordinates is labeled r theta. And what's kind of strange with polar form is that you start with theta and then you go out or back or whatever r. So unlike uh, rectangular coordinates where we always start with x and then do y, with polar coordinates, we're going to start with theta and then do r. If r is positive, see, that's Mari. Oh, thanks, Ben. No problem. If r is positive, then we're going to start at the pole and go in the direction of theta. If r is negative, we'll start at the pole and go in the direction opposite to theta. And if r is zero, we're going to be on the pole. Theta is a directed angle, just like we said. It starts at the polar axis. If it's positive, it's counterclockwise. If it's negative, it's clockwise. And always it starts at the polar axis. So to plot these points, oh, and um, polar graph paper is round. I'm, I'm going to print out a blank one really fast. Coffee tea. Sorry, I didn't think to do this before. Oh, that's fine. Thanks, Ben.
Oh, good. It came out big. So to graph in polar form, let's see. The first point that we want to graph is 4, 3 pi over, or 2 pi over 3. And we're going to start at 2 pi over 3. So let's see, 2 pi over 3. And then we're going to go to the pole. So this is the pole. And we're on this angle, 2 pi over 3. And we see that r is 4. So we're going to go out toward 2 pi over 3, 4 units. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's P1. P2 is negative 2, negative 7 pi over 6. So the first thing I need to do is find negative 7 pi over 6. And I just want to think, where is positive 7 pi over 6? It's in the third quadrant. So if I'm looking at negative 7 pi over 6, it'll be in the second quadrant. And of course, it will align with another pi over 6. So do you see we have 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, but we went in the clockwise direction, so it's negative. So this is equivalent to negative 7 pi over 6. We go to the pole, and R was negative 2. Is that right? Yes. R is negative 2, so we're going to go opposite the pole, opposite the angle. So here's our angle. And we're going to go along this line opposite the angle. So one, two. And there's our point P2. Notice that points on a polar uh, grid have many different uh, interpretations. Like we could call P2 negative pi over 6, 2, because we could go negative pi over 6 and 2 units toward it. We could also call P2 11 pi over 6 positive 2. We could call P2 um, well, I don't want to think very hard. So, But do you see that in polar coordinates, each point has many, many different ways it can be expressed. All right. What about 3 comma negative 5 pi over 4? Well, first, we're going to remember that negative 5 pi over 4. Oh, I should see where positive 5 pi over 4 is. Let's see. Oh, here it is. It's in quadrant 3. That means if I'm going backward, it'll be in quadrant 2. And it will line up with the other pi over 4 angle. So it's going to line up here with 3 pi over 4. We said that r was 3. So we're going to begin at the pole along this line and go toward 3 pi over 4, 3 units. P4 is negative 3 zero, P4, negative three, zero. 
That means that the angle is zero. Well, we start at the polar axis, and we're not going to go up or down. We're just going to stay here. R is negative 3. That means we're going to go opposite the, dis the uh, position of the angle, but on this line, and we're going to go 3 units. So instead of going toward the positive um, polar axis, we're going to go backward. 1, 2, 3. And then finally, we have T5, which is 1, 17 pi over 12. And I did that because this particular polar graph paper, let me see if I can zoom out. This particular polar graph paper is marked off in 12. So let's see, I have. 11 pi over 12, 13 pi over 12, oh, no, 11, 12 pi over 12, 13 pi over 12, 14 pi over 12, 15 pi over 12, 16 pi over 12, 17 pi over 12. So here's our angle. So even weird angles can be um, pretty easily graphed. And we're going to go one unit in the direction of 17 pi over 12. We always start at the pole. So there is P5. Any questions at all about graphing points that are given in polar form? All righty. And let's see if I got it right. Looks good. And I tried to give lots of <laughs> lots of descriptions of where things are because this is easy. But if you skip this, the rest can get really complicated. So it's good to get this super solidly down. Well, of course, if we've got two different systems of coordinates, we're going to want to go from one to the other. If we're starting with polar and we want to go to rectangular, let's look at a triangle. So here's the pole. Here's the polar axis. little r, there's our point, p, r, theta. But I know that I can slap on x and y axes on top of this. And if I do that, I can drop a horizontal down to a perpendicular, I mean, down to the polar axis or the positive x-axis. And now I want to call this point PAB. This is, this is polar, R theta is polar. AB or XY will be rectangular. And I know the position of a point in rectangular coordinates. Let's see, the horizontal distance is little a. The vertical distance is little b, because that's how we find a point. But now we have a right triangle with everything filled in. And we can write any of these parts in terms of the others. So. I can see pretty easily, let's see, the cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse 
is little a over r. But I'd like to solve for little a so that if I start in polar coordinates, I can get to rectangular. So I'm going to multiply both sides by little r. And we get that little a and or x, however you set it up, will be equal to r times the cosine of theta. And b, well, I know that the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is b, hypotenuse is r. If I multiply both sides by little r, I get b, and we see that b, the vertical distance, is r times the sine of theta. So if you start with polar coordinates, you can move to rectangular coordinates by finding the cosine of the angle and multiply by r, and then finding the sine of theta and multiply by r, and that'll give you the x and then the y coordinate. Well, what if we start with a and b? We've got the same triangle. Let's see. So we're given PAB, and we want to find R and theta. What do we do? We know how to find R if we know little a and little b. Yes. Yeah. How? Uh, the Pythagorean theorem. Beautiful. And and I'm going to take it a step farther. Well, let's see. We know that R squared is a squared plus b squared. I'm going to take the square root of both sides, slap a plus or minus. But what do I know about R? That it's always going to be positive? That's right. So here, we're not really worrying about the direction of R, but just the magnitude or amount of R. Does that make sense? Yeah. Groovy. Now we've got R in terms of A and B. What do we, what kind of trig function do we know that involves theta and A and B? Tangent? Yeah, good. We know that the tangent of theta is b over a because tangent is opposite over adjacent. And we want theta. We don't want the tangent of theta. So what can I do to both sides to get theta on this left side? What undoes tangent? I'm Maybe not you like entirely what? sure what the question is. So, what function do we do we know about? that we can apply to tangent that will undo it? What's the opposite of tangent? Cotangent. 
inverse tangent? Is that what you said? Yeah. Beautiful. So I can take the arc tan or the inverse tangent of both sides, and I get that theta is equal to the arc tan of B over A. And this is where I have to be mindful. Arc tan is only de uh, defined in the first and fourth quadrants. So here theta has to be in either quadrant one or quadrant four. If this is the negative value, B over A is negative, we have to be in quadrant four, but the point itself may not be in quadrant four. So quadrant four will give us our angle. And then we have to see which quadrant is our point in and how can we move it there? And we'll have an example of that in just a bit. But these are the equations that enable us to go back and forth. If we start with r and theta, we can take the cosine of theta multiplied by r and the sine of theta multiplied by r to get the uh, rectangular coordinate. And if we start the, with the rectangular coordinates, a and b, we can square them, take the sum, and then the square root will be r. The arc tangent of b over a will be theta. And then we just have to look to see is our point, which, which quadrant is our point in? So that's, that's basically what I wrote down here with some pretty images. So let's convert. This justification is just what we did. But let's convert these polar coordinates into rectangular. So, okay, here we've got for PA, we know that R is 2 and theta is negative pi over 3. I know that the x coordinate will be r times the cosine of theta. The y coordinate will be r times the sine of theta. So we'll have 2 times the cosine of negative pi over 3 and two times the sine of negative pi over three. Where is the angle negative pi over three? Which quadrant? Uh, the fourth quadrant. Good. And it's, it's right here. So, what are the coordinates of that point? That's that's our sine and cosine. Well, what's it? In other words, what is the cosine of pi over three? And what is the cosine of what is the sine of pi over three? And then we'll just have to correct for SIGNs. So, what is the cosine of pi over three? Maybe one half. And is cosine positive or negative in quadrant four? Positive. Good. Is sine positive or negative in quadrant four? Negative. Good. And since cosine 
of pi over three was one half, we know that the sine of pi over three is square root of three over two, and it'll be negative. So we have two times negative square root of three over two. The twos divide out. And we have negative square root of three. So P sub A is equal to one comma negative square root of three. And square root of three is approximately 1.8. Is that right? I'm going to check. <clears throat> Let's see. Three square root. 1.7. So this is approximately 1 comma 1.7 negative. And what is important is we don't need to be any more accurate than that because our graph paper is not any more accurate than that. In fact, the graph paper is tiny. So we've got one comma one point seven so one negative one point seven will be a point in quadrant four and you can see its location using polar coordinates and then also rectangular for point B, we can see that point B is 3, 5 pi over 6. So that means that A is going to be 3 times the cosine of 5 pi over 6. And B will be 3 times the sine of 5 pi over 6. And now we, we think about the first quadrant. What are the sine and the cosine of pi over 6? Which one is 1 half? Uh, wait. What are we? What are we trying to find? The the coordinates for pi over six. Uh, it's square root of three over two, comma one half. Good. Our angle is in quadrant. Well, that's Evelyn. Our angle is in quadrant three of oh, quadrant two. In quadrant two, is sine positive or negative? Well, in quadrant two, sine stays positive, cosine is negative. That means that the cosine of five pi over six is negative square root of three over two, and that sine five pi over six is positive one half. And we're multiplying both of those values by three. So we have little a is three times negative square root of three over two. And that little b is three times one half. 
So for B, we get three halves. And for A, we get negative three square root of three over two. Oh, well, I know that three halves is 1.5, but I'm not sure at all what uh, three squared to three over two is. So let's see. Three square root times three divided by two. So it's negative 2.6. So approximately in rectangular coordinates, point B is negative 2.6 comma 1.5. Next one. Point C is negative four. Pi over four. What are the sine and the cosine of pi over four? Square root of two over two. Good. So to get little a, we're going to multiply by. We're going to multiply r by the cosine of pi over 4. And little b will be r times the sine of pi over 4. And this is kind of nice because it reduces. So negative four divided by two is negative two. We get that little a is negative two square root of two and little b is the same, negative two square root of two. And let's see what that is close to. Two square root times two. So 2.8. So point C is approximately negative 2.8 comma negative D. Oh, it is, there it is. Negative five negative five negative two pi negative three pi over four so I know that little a is our cosine theta so negative five cosine of negative three pi over four. And that little b is our sine theta. It's negative five times the sine of negative three pi over four. And now I just have to remember where negative three pi over four is. Let's find that nice big circle. So positive 3 pi over 4 is in quadrant 2. That means that negative 3 pi over 4 will be in quadrant 3. So x and y are negative here. That means the sine and the cosine are negative there. 
So let's see. I know that cosine of pi over four is square root of three, square root of two over two. So cosine of negative three pi over four will be negative square root of two over two. So we have negative five times negative square root of two over two. And the same for the sine. Negative five times negative square root of two over two. And now we just need to estimate. Oh, we've got two negatives though. So both of these end up positive. We have five halves square root of two and five halves square root of two. And let's say five halves is 2.5. So I have 2.5 times two square root is 3.5. And let's look at that one. We said that negative three pi over four is in quadrant three and that r was negative five. So I'm gonna use this line, this pi over four line, but I'm not gonna go toward five pi over four or negative uh, three pi over four. I'm gonna go the opposite way and I'm gonna go five units. So one, two, three, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. So this is the point negative five, negative three pi over four. And let's see, using rectangular coordinates, about where that would be. We said that both points were approximately 3.5 out. So the A value and the B value. So we get that this point is going to be in the very middle of quadrant one, because we go at the same amount over as we do up. And do you see that that does coincide with this point, that the two are really are in the same place? All right, we have one more, I think. Yes, the so point E is three comma three pi over two. And that's fun because we don't have one of one of the sine or cosine is zero. Well which one is zero? Sine or cosine? That's right. So we know that at the top, sine is one, cosine is zero. At the bottom, sine is negative one, cosine is still zero. So little a is going to be three times cosine three pi over two 
which is zero, so little a is zero. Little b will be three times the sine of three pi over two, which is three times negative one or negative three. And do you see that that makes sense? Three pi over two is at the bottom of the unit circle. And we're three point out. So we're at three and we went three pi over two around. And then if we're in rectangular coordinates, we go along the negative y axis, three units. Best of luck. Oh. And so we do end up in the same place. Okay, let's do the opposite. Let's start with rectangular coordinates and go toward polar. So here, point A, little a is positive 2, little b is negative 2, and we can draw a triangle. Let's see, if a is positive and b is negative, we're in quadrant 4. And remind me how we can find R. Yeah, Pythagorean theorem. So we know that R is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. Let's see. A squared is 4. B squared is also 4. We get the square root of 8. 8 is 4 times 2, and the square root of 4 is 2, so we get 2 times the square root of 2. And 2 times 2 square root is approximately 2.8. So here are is about 2.8. Now we know that theta is the R10 of B over A. Well, B divided by A, they're the same number, but opposite sign. So two divided by two is one and a negative is left. So we've got the R10 of negative one, and I remember that tangent, the invertible tangent, is only defined in quadrants one and four, so that negative one must be quadrant four, and the place where sine and cosine are the same, so that we get a negative one, is negative pi over four. So this point, Little a will be 2.8 comma negative pi over 4. What about the next one? Yep. We've got point B is three comma, oh, wrong one. Here we go. <laughs> uh, point B, yes, it's showing up, is two comma, two square root of three. And so I know that little a is two, little b is two, Square root of three, r is equal 
to the square root of a squared plus b squared. That'll be 2 squared plus 2 square root of 3 squared. Well, 2 squared, that's a 4. This 2 squared is also 4. And square root of 3 squared is 3. So 3 times 4 is 12 plus 4. Let's write this down. 4 plus 12, which is 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. So here r is 4. And let's see. The tangent of theta is b over a. b is 2 square root of 3. a is 2. So the 2's divide out. We get square root of 3. We must be in quadrant 1 because this is positive. And which angle has a tangent of square root of 3? Well, it's the one where sine is square root of 3 over 2 and cosine is 1 half. And that'll be up at pi over 3. So the point B is also equal to four comma pi over three. Point C is negative four, three. Well, that's kind of not horrible. It's a three, four, five triangle. So I know R is going to be five. Let's go ahead and write it out. A is little four, negative four. B is three. And I know that nine plus 16 is 25, and the square root of 25 is five. To find theta, we want to find the arc tan of 3 over, let's see, let's put the negative out front, negative 3 over 4. Three divided by four negative. Three divided by four negative. And when when we find the arc tangent of a negative value, we are always going to land in quadrant four. So let's see. In degrees, it's negative thirty six point nine. Let's see. But negative 36.9, that's close to negative 30, which is 11 pi over 6. The point is over here in quadrant 2. And so when you see that you have a negative tangent and that the point is, should be in quadrant 2, not in quadrant 4, then you just take the theta that you found. So here theta was negative 36.9. And then you do 180 minus theta to get the angle in the third quadrant, in the second quadrant. So 180 minus 36.9. Let's see. One eighty minus thirty six point 
I'm going to get 141, 143.1. And I'm going to find its position by com by comparing it with angles that I know. So I know that 2 pi over 3 is 110 because it's 30 plus 90, 120. That 3 pi over 4... It's 135. And our angle was 143. So let's see. 5 pi over 6 is 130 plus 30 is 150. So our angle is between 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 6 closer to 5 pi over 6, and we said that r was 5, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so to get our point in the correct quadrant, we had to take 180 and subtract it, And we can see that this is indeed very close to the point two comma two squared of two. Oh no, no, we're doing negative three four. So negative three negative three positive four. Negative three, and then one, two, three, four. So I, I get that it should be a little higher, but I'm not at all accurate with all this garbage. But you kind of see how this thing works. And we've got one more point D in rectangular coordinate. is three zero to find r we're going to have the square root of three squared plus zero squared well zero squared is zero three squared is nine and the square root of nine is three that's kind of groovy also the arc can of b over a. That'll give us theta. Well, zero divided by any non zero is zero. Arc 10 of zero is zero. So its polar representation is also three zero, an angle of zero, and we go out the polar axis three units. Let's see where we are. Oh, now we're at the prizes. Okay, which um, I'll post for y'all to work on. And I'd like to take a five minute break and then we'll come back to complex numbers. All righty. <laughs> 